Midday to Sue Solo, way on Atlanta's number one hip hop station, Hot 1079. Besties, I got a very special treat for you today. Um, I listen to some music, and y'all know me. Yeah, I work in hip hop, but honey, y'all ain't gonna drag me all day. So I had to go home and make sure to listen to some Rosemary. Kadife put me on, and I am loving this Is It Real song with Roddy Rich. Hey, Rosemary. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you? Your voice is amazing. Thank you. You so so now I'm, I feel Aww. better because I'm like, okay, Kadife, why you been holding now? I didn't know, Aww. but now I'm kind of obsessed. So I was reading your bio, and it says that you grew up in a Dominican and Puerto Rican household. Why yes. is that, like, important to say? Um, I just feel like it reflects, well, I might be biased, but I feel like both my cultures are really rich, um, especially by means of, like, music mm-hmm. and just everything. I feel like it represents me. I feel like... It's just like a, a a very important piece of who I am. Yeah. So. So let me ask you, how was dating in your household? Like, did your parents allow you to date? Were you sneaking oh, off? How man. do you write love songs if you can't experience love? No. First of all, <laughs> I I'm a rule follower. I uh, I only snuck away out of school. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that's <laughs> not, fair. From, hey. not, not from the house. Okay. I wasn't that crazy. But um, no, yeah. I mean, I feel like. Um, I didn't, really. I feel like I would be what they call a late bloomer, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, But I think I just experienced a lot of other things in a deep way with the other things that I had going on in my life. So it wasn't necessarily just, like, love songs. I feel like my music is about, like, holding on and perseverance and sadness and, you know, navigating just the world being rough and hard and especially whenever you're not given the best of circumstances or, you know, things like that. But so, yeah, dating, I don't know. I just, I'm a late bloomer. Yeah. I didn't have, I didn't, I just minded my business. <laughs> I felt that way too because um, I grew up in a Ethiopian household. So Amazing. there was like, why do you need a cell phone? Why do you feel like you're going to a high school party? No, you're, you're not. You're going to sit here and read a book. So oh, I felt like yeah. I was a really late bloomer to dating too. So how did it mold you into, like, getting into this style of music, though? Yeah. Because you could have chosen to, like, rage out, but you chose to kind of be <laughs> I feel like this I've... powerhouse voice. Wow, thank you. For um, sure. I'm not sure. I think that's just something that came naturally to me. My mom uh, played a lot of, like, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston growing up, Lauryn Hill. Um, so those were sort of the things that I was hearing you know, on a day-to-day basis, my mom sang as well. Um, so, yeah, I think whenever I started creating music, I think even now, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still kind of, like, finding my sound, you know, like finding the things that I want to do. But R&B always came the most natural to me, I think, just because of its emotiveness. Yeah. Like, it's so emotional, and, and that's not something that I feel like I am in my day-to-day life. So it's almost like an outlet for me, for real, because I think I was I was taught to, like, bottle things in and not yeah. show emotion and not, you know. So I think it, it's always been, like, a release for me. So maybe that's why it came so natural to me to start, to start there. I always tell people that, like, of course, you know, black folks are always like, family business is family dis- business. But yeah. foreigners, it's, like, really family business. Yeah, if you open sure. your mouth and say anything. So I, I kind of feel I relate to you in that, too. I was told yeah. to... Be quiet, like keep it to yourself. So writing was also an outlet for you? Yeah. So I think ever since I could remember, it's always been easier for me to express myself in like a writing format. Um, I feel like I'm I'm a person who's very careful with my words. At least I try to be. um, Because I always say, you can always say more. You can't take anything Mm -hmm. back. You know what I mean? So even when I was a kid and something difficult was going on or something that I felt like might have been too hard to say, I would write down and my, me and my mom had a notebook that we would pass back and forth to each other. Then it went on to like me and my friends and, you know, then it just became, you know, songs, music. Everyone knows I am the the Henny girl. Okay, oh, so I love that. What <laughs> I love that. What is this Henny Talk song? You got to break that down for me because I haven't heard that song. Henny Talk. Henny Talk is a song that's so special to me. Um, I feel like it was the first time, first of all, my catalog of music ahead of Henny Talk, I feel like it was very, I don't want to say one-dimensional, but it was very, um, 
I feel like I wasn't pushing myself mm. out of like any sort of comfort zones. Henny Talk was the first song that I feel like I really tried to experiment in like my delivery, my tone. Um, also just with like being a little bit more sexy, you okay. know what I mean? So I feel like it's just the, it's just the, I, I love Henny Talk. Right now I'm on tour opening up for Aaron Ray, incredible artist. And that's the first song on my set. Yeah. Even though it's not even on the project that I'm, you know, promoting right now. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's just one of those. But yeah, Henny Talk, it's just about, you know, you, you start on that Henny and then you just start, <laughs> Start. I, I don't want to cuss, but just start you talking cuss, a whole right. uh, talking a whole bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um, then one thing leads to another, and then it's just sort of like a cycle. But whenever you get a chance, if you a henny girl, I am girl. Yeah, like very much so. I love that. Yeah, same. So same though. Same. I love that. Yeah. Okay, I gotta get a little gift for you then. Why didn't you tell me so this, Kitty Bay? I could have come up here with a gift package for her. Oh. Uh. <laughs> nah, man, you're, you're just, I want to fight you so bad, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so it sounds like that song was really just, like, pivotal in you, like, identifying where you want to go next. Yeah, for sure. It was definitely, and on top of that, like, the producer of that song, um, what does he go by? Uh, Tracksuit. Tracksuit. He had played that sort of in, like, a pack, mm -hmm. and I'm one of those people where it's just, like, I don't think I'm too competitive, but he played that particular beat, and mm -hmm. he was like, oh, I've played this for some people. Nobody's really been able to, like, attack it. Everybody feels like it's too overpowering, and I was like, I want that one. I can. I got I want it. That. And, and it's still one of my favorite songs to this day, so. What can we see from you next? What What do the people expect? And, well, actually, before we get to that, yeah, how is navigating Hollywood? You know... I'm not there. <laughs> I I don't know. I I say I'm like a I'm like a bystander. I'm on the outskirts waving. <laughs> like I'm still making my way there, so I couldn't tell you. Okay. But it's, it looks kind of crazy. Yeah, just keep your soul intact, man. You have like such a beautiful spirit. Thank like you so I much. think that it's so important to just like try to stay as grounded as possible. For sure. Yeah. Thank it's, you. Yeah, it's tough. So what what do we have? You have a show in Atlanta. I do. I have a show tonight. Okay. Opening up for Aaron Ray. We're at the Masquerade. Right. That's what it's called. Masquerade, mm -hmm. masquerade, oh, masquerade. Close to the house. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then, obviously, you know, my latest project is out right now called Rock Paper Scissors Recut. Uh, Why Rock Paper Scissors? And first of all, when I saw your head on the ground <laughs> like that, I was like. Who cut her and why? Why is her head on the ground? <laughs> That's a great question. Actually, I wanted something, like, jarring, something yeah. that would stop you or at least, like, peak an in interest mm -hmm. to be like, what is this and mm -hmm. why Why is this? You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, my head's cut off. And what I kind of attributed that to is, like, sort of, like, disassociating from myself oh. to kind of navigate through all these things. I'm a big... I'm a big disassociation okay. person. Like, I just, okay. and that could be due to my upbringing, you know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. it's like, um, so that that's kind of what it was. It's like my head is in a different space than, like, my body and my heart. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> and then I titled it Rock, Paper, Scissors because I kind of wanted to break down sort of the cycles of a relationship yeah. and, like, a different way so my sister and I sat down and we started thinking of what how we could possibly group this music up at this point um and so yeah we came up with rock paper scissors and so rock being like kind of like the beginning the foundation is super yeah. solid moving into paper where it's a little bit more fragile and then uh scissors where you would decide to either you know cut away cut with make something new you know what I mean yeah. so so yeah so rock paper scissors. I'm so excited. You kind of sound like an Aries a little bit. What's what's your? Zodiac? I'm a Leo. What do they say about y'all? Um, that we're dramatic and full okay. of ourselves and big and, and overzealous. Want. Uh, sure, <laughs> I, that just might be a me thing. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I feel like I I'm, I do believe in some horoscopy stuff. Yeah, but <clears throat> everybody's like Leo oh, and our hair, our hair, okay. our hair is a thing. Um. People are just like Leos. They're just like overwhelmed with confidence, and they walk into a room and they're just like a superstar, and they're this and they did it. And I'm just like, mm. I mean, if the shoe fits, I mean, because I see it, 
Oh, you're yeah, so girl, sweet. The Thank you so much. It. It you're so sweet. Where can you, the thank people you. find you? Where can they follow you? How do they keep up? Yeah, is there yeah. merch? What are I we doing? love that. Yeah, so that's on my website. Yeah. Um, Rosemary, what is it? Rose, uh, Rosemary Official. Sorry, they just changed it. It's okay. Say, say it Rosemaryofficial.com. Um, at Lil X Rosie at L I L X R O S I E on all social media platforms and just Rosemary. I heard that, you know, whenever you type me in on Google, you gotta get through some old white ladies first to find me. Yeah. So that, I just been yeah. saying that I, that just means I gotta work harder, but I'm Girl. I'm there. I'm at the bottom of the page, I think. I feel you. So. My name is Suzanne Solomon. So mm. yeah. They're both like mm. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for coming in to Thank talk to us. We are so me. looking forward to seeing your career grow. You're so sweet. And the next Thank time you're you in so Atlanta, much. I will make sure that I have a heads up. Aw, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. Thank I really you for enjoyed coming. you. Absolutely.